Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hey there everybody. Thank you for joining me again. I'm going to be discussing a little bit about the impeachment inquiry. This Thursday it wrapped up and it seems that uh, what they'll do now is decide on what will happen next. I don't like the media perception of everything, so I'm going to try to give an unbiased opinion of what I think is going on. On both sides, there's just been bullshit. But as of now, they submit a report of the investigation to the House Judiciary Committee. And that'll decide to draft articles of impeachment or the charges against Trump. That is, feels like a long time coming. I think a part of me would rather have seen the Democrats attack Trump's policies, his flubs in the political arena, and then beat him in 2020. Now, whether this comes out of these Mueller investigations and this Russia nonsense, I guess I could see maybe a couple of of these articles of impeachment being witness tampering or obstruction of justice. Because that's all that really came out of that. I mean, it implies maybe that he had ties and all these things. But at the end of the day, the Mueller report doesn't indict the president. So taken from that, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to draft articles that have to do with a couple of things from that. But we sit here now, this clown of a president, and I try to be as fair and balanced as I can, recognizing the hysteria on the left, everything he says, everything he does, blah, 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 and the nonsense on the right also. You can't just ignore all the bullshit he does. So we have the first week, which had maybe three witnesses and certain things lead to further investigation so you'll have some closed door hearings and more evidence is brought in the one thing i'll say noticing the first week going by no matter how we got here if you want to say it's a witch hunt if you want to say they've been out from from day one then it's not fair whatever the point is you're here now and the democrats look like they're serious and doing their business to try to get Trump out. The Republicans on the other hand look like they're trying to frame it as it's not a serious affair and that they could just be rude idiots to witnesses and now again there's a bias there I guess uh, I don't like Trump at all he's got so many fucking disorders and he's such an idiot but Trying to look at it from both sides. Not only do you have uh, some closed door hearings, and that's another thing. If you look back at the impeachment of Clinton and or the, I don't like this Republican crying nonsense. You made rules; they've been used before. And when you look at what you did with Hillary, who I think is a crook to begin with, so. I take no sides there. You're here now. You, you, these are the rules. These are the... Um, uh, this is, these are the rules you have to play by. And you should. I think you should treat it way more serious than you're treating it. And during this, you got a President Trump who is insists on opening his mouth. I mean, even if you want to play it fair, he's, he's out there insulting people on Twitter... While hearings are going on, making his dumbfounded claims and obviously lying again. You don't say you don't pay attention to these hearings and then tweet 30 times about the hearings. 
And I even try to take it from a behavioral thing. Like, okay, yeah, fine. What if I was innocent and all this was to being done against me? Yeah, I'd be mad. I'd be outraged. And I would fly to see my pants and say things emotionally. But this is a pattern of three years now. You got three years of this buffoon. So, like I said, you had about three witnesses on the first week. You got uh, closed door hearings and transcripts being written up. Uh, the names don't come to me right now, but one was a, uh, a former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. I think it's Marie Ivanovich. And when you look at the testimony, and even when you read some of the transcripts, which in the second week, they brought people on to clarify them. Even like I said, even if you don't believe that this is right and it's a witch hunt, the Democrats are putting their feet to the fire. And the counter arguments, I'm not buying too well. Although it is fair to say that media, the major media outlets, are spinning it however they want. You're going to get left-wing propaganda that's going to isolate certain parts of the hearing, make it uh, feel like it's going a certain way, and then you'll see the right-wing perspective. And some are legit. Some of the testimony which is clipped and put out there, when you look at it from a neutral position, it's not really um, as heavy or as damaging as you think it's going to be. Also, with people, although everything going around these hearings is also a mess. Also, because you got these Democrat debates going on, there are things going on in Bolivia, and I, a part of me just wishes we were addressing real policies and issues that are going on, and yet we're all wrapped up in the impeachment inquiry, which is an inquiry, by the way. So trying to keep notes in my wheel of interest as I keep categories of interest to keep shifting from so I don't get too bogged down. I want to keep uh, tabs on what's going on in politics. So I go in and I make my notes on my one stupid piece of paper that I can barely understand. But summing up the first week, more in favor of the Democrats, but... What seems to be damning is never so damning, mostly hearsay, and my opinion on trying to get the whistleblower to come forward is stupid. I think the Republicans are playing a dangerous game there. There are laws and there are procedures in place to protect them, I'm calling them out, and it's just not going to help, I don't think. Not in the long run, anyway. I might help diffuse the true truth of what's going on, but I don't know if um, it's worked it in the end. You have a couple of witnesses that are now going to defer to the president, right? They'll just, I think it's uh, Mulvaney, supposed to be a key witness, the White House Chief of Staff. And he'll just do the, oh, uh, you know, the president says we have immunity. And I think even one of the, the Justice Departments or the Justice Department itself actually ruled in their favor. And that's fine. You want to play this game, you try to impeach the president, bring real evidence, make it stick, and I'm fine. You play this wishy washy Mueller investigation type stuff. I don't really buy it that much. I think after the first week, you could say there could be more backlash, even though it looks like when you analyze it that they made better points. The framing of the event seems to be legit, and it keeps getting backed up by other testimony. And even new people are brought into the, um, the evidence gathering. And it doesn't seem like... Trump or the Republicans even care to 
counter an argument and set the record straight with evidence. It seems to be, oh, we're just going to smear your name, smear your reputation, claim your motives, and I guess, yeah, they're going to frame their own way out of this. But I don't see the super bombshells in the first week. I don't think there's um, a cause to say that's it. It's we've got them on any one thing. And you, while they're doing this, you got the White House releasing a summary of their calls. Just still trying to get through that. What was actually said and what is social media putting out. So this could be a. A real big shit show, but trying to be more active and aware and having an informed opinion. This is what I do now. I look into these things and try to find different sources to get to the heart of the matter. So did the first week affect anything? Maybe if you look at polls, but who trusts polls now these days? I don't want to say not much. I think when you hear the left-wing media propaganda put out there, and if most of it's true, I think people are just really concerned. Like, uh, I guess in a way I am. If if it, if it's true that the president and the main thing they're going for is a quid pro quo, uh, bribery, an extortion angle, fine. If that's the case you're making, and I know there are differences between law for felonies, and it might be different in this situation. Look what they did for Clinton. They went after him for some shady stuff and wound up finding out he got a blowjob. So I'm not, I'm, I'm surprised that the Republicans think this is a big joke when they themselves will, will know the depths you'll go to to attack somebody who you perceive in the wrong in the first week shows you'll justify all your beliefs you'll just play your angle and i think after the first week i don't think the republicans are doing really well in this especially when there's so much i see or don't see so you don't see the overwhelming trump supporters out there yeah and articles being you know highlighted for their truth or counter argument and before this you'd always see that you'd always see um a trump supporter propose an angle to a story to make it seem better which is fine i mean everybody's gonna do it it just most people just buy it for what it is but i'm gonna say i wouldn't look kindly on republicans the way they're treating people and you're not going to get people like John Bolton to these hearings. I don't think so. And well, after the first week of these inquiries, is it triggering Trump to throw people onto the bus? I don't know. But it does look weird when you see these memes with everybody he's attached to is just in jail or under investigation. It's It's pretty funny. And when you compare things as much and i don't even like obama that much but on face value he was a classy statesman well-spoken and even when you look at the evidence to try to gather towards a bias or if it's not a bias about how good it was as a president you're not finding all these ancillary damaging evidence all over the place so First week, Democrats, I guess. Uh, Republicans are obviously doubling down since I explained in the beginning that they're already on the Thanksgiving break. And they said that they're not closing the window in case new evidence comes up. But for now, they're going to see if they can draft articles. So I know what happened in the second week. And now is the second week. You know, you got so many more public uh, testimonies 
and I don't understand why they were complaining in the beginning, the Republicans. This was obviously what's going to happen. It'll be public. There'll be closed door when it's needed. And the second week seems to be uh, delving into a lot of the closed door testimony, from what I can gather, from this first week. And even a, I guess, a new um, witness, which was gleaned from another part of the testimony from the first week. And here, I think you can see what I was talking about in, during the first week where the Democrats, I mean, no matter how they got here, they're just pressing the issue. They keep pressing these issues. I do have a problem with most of it being hearsay. And it's damning hearsay and it's building up and it's being corroborated by more than one person. And then news articles will come out. And you have a, like I said, I think nine people publicly testified and there were some maybe more closed door hearings. And then you're starting to see more of the or Republicans' arguments being framed and I think they're doing a bad job like I said no matter how you got here the Democrats seem to be on point or at least focused on a certain angle and the angle they chose was well they got their aid and there's no quid pro quo but when you look at it the other way it doesn't matter if it was held as a requirement and it was revealed from a whistleblower and then the aid went through so i don't think the republicans have a good angle on this and i would hope that they would bring their own witnesses although to be fair out of the witnesses they tried to get subpoenaed i think it's adam schiff refused a couple of them and you could play that angle I guess any way you want but the first week ends the second week begins We've got a big slate of witnesses publicly and there's all media surrounding it again stories are being blown up things are being focused on not fairly in my opinion but what are you going to do when so so many social media outlets are favored one way or the other I hope people will do some their due diligence and do their own research. Don't even believe me. Like these are just my feelings on the matter. I'm not some intrepid reporter. So they've got this angle they're pushing, and you can see it in the second week stronger. And again, can the Republicans not be such assholes? Even if you believe it's a witch hunt, even if you believe it's unfair, it says you believe that this is all a cover up so the Democrats don't have to do an autopsy on their losing to Trump and bad feelings and vengeance, revenge, whatever. It's here and they're just being buffoons. You got this Nunez guy who is, I think it might have been one of the last days and there is a story breaks that he is involved and he had his own part to play in this and you could see it on camera <laughs> they got these great memes out now of course you'll see several um testimony but even our own military officers who they try to smear immediately and I believe he had good comebacks. He set the record straight, in my opinion, at least in an impartial way. Although you can never really determine these things <laughs> how truthful, but what are you going to do? You have to, at least to yourself, justify your beliefs. And I put a little more effort into it, I hope. But you're treating people like assholes, Republicans. Get serious, bring your evidence, counter it with serious, at least reasonable fucking arguments. 
You got people saying um, Trump saying things like he doesn't give a shit. Uh, he wants the Biden investigation. And again, hearsay. But you got people coming on and corroborating that. And just like I explained with the first week, when you pull back and you analyze it, what seems like big bombshells, big uh, news stories that should break it and make it solidify it as a definite thing, you find cracks in the argument. And granted, if I'm just, you know, using the scale of justice, I think the Democrats are doing a better job. And it hurts the Republican side by compounding it with being idiots and belligerent and disrespectful. But hey, their angle is to treat it like it's not serious, so fine. Everybody could beat their chest and fucking become caveman philosophers, but I don't think this is a smart thing to do. And I've come out in my other video at this point, I don't really give a shit what side you're on. I don't consider myself anything anymore. If anything, I'm an independent, but there's too much corruption on both sides, so I try to look at it fairly. So Democrats give me the real evidence, <laughs> the damning evidence, and I would be more confident in that this was at least the right thing to do, no matter how it turns out. And I kind of don't like Nancy Pelosi to begin with. She's as corrupt as they come. But her resistance to do the impeachment, I thought was smart. Look at it from that perspective. This could be damaging. But I think when you look at it, you break it down. No matter how it's um, framed by Republicans, the Democrats are coming with their quid pro quo angle, their bribery, their extortion. I wouldn't be surprised if they bring in witness tampering and obstruction of justice. They are obviously trying to connect Giuliani, Nunez, and others into this ring of whatever the fucking conspiracy. And, and if there are truths to it, and I don't think the Republicans did a good enough job to dissuade me of those truths. I'm not full-fledged for this impeachment. I'm not sure if it's just me being hesitant because how much I do hate Trump, so maybe I'm resisting uh, the bias and just call him an idiot every fucking day, multiple times a day on Twitter or Facebook. It would become too easy. And I have some discussions with friends here and there about what I would use as an argument to prop up or a steel man, Donald Trump's point of view. And even if you try to do that, he just opens his mouth and says something stupid. And you're not defending these things. These are things, that, they're so numerous all the time, it's hard to get a beat on it. But they're there. And like I said, you've got the Republicans just deny. Now they're coming out with this new sayings like never Trumpers. I mean, fine. It's a witch hunt. It's uh, nonsense. The Democrats are uh, they're possessed by demons and they're fucking working for Satan. Fine. All right. But if that's the case. You better bring, you better bring it in these hearings. It looks like you're confounded. It looks like you're just grasping at straws when I don't even think the the Democrats have such a strong case as is being promoted on certain media. So you have a chance to make me see how stupid this is. I've seen some arguments from before when the Mueller hearings were going on and I agreed with them. They're bringing up certain things when, when it's looked into, the Democrats did the same things. They were caught rigging the, uh, the primaries. And people like to talk about the Hillary emails, but it's not the emails 
that they were stolen themselves is a deeper story with what the emails actually said. And I think if they want to go and investigate that, fine. So now they got this angle here, putting it that the Trump was looking to get at the heart of the corruption from Ukraine in 2016. And they're going to go with, oh, okay, this is what we um, were trying to do. Everything I said, my perfect fucking words and my perfect phone calls were because I wanted to get the heart of this um, corruption. Elections mean something. But it doesn't work with this attitude he's got. It's... uh, I don't think it's going to wear well with Republicans or Democrats after a while. There's only so much of a blowhard you can be, rude, insulting, you know, innuendos and fucking feigned veiling of your real agendas and your human behavior. For me, it's just too evident. So I would hope that the Republicans would have had a better fucking stance here. You know, better counter arguments, and that this would be a surprise to people. And oh, I would just end this with these here, these inquiries are bullshit, it's a witch hunt, they've got nothing. I don't think I can do that. And I'm not full bore ahead with Democrats, they got him. This, this is it, it's over, he's getting out. And a part of me wouldn't be surprised if nothing comes to this and he's re elected. I think the odds are lower. But you get a corrupt Democrat who they rigged the primaries for, like fucking Joe Biden, or Kamala Harris or Cory Booker, one of these corrupt, charming people. And you'll get the same backlash, I think, that you got with Hillary. People want change. And these inquiries are maybe that manifested. Maybe their origins aren't in total justified but you keep turning over enough rocks just like the Mueller investigation I think there's political corruption that's been going on between nations since they were able to get their hands on the technology and to implement it so finding out these little things during the those investigations was not too surprising so you got the second week of hearings you got nine people you're trying to smear veterans and again doesn't look well for the republicans i think the democrats did better again and i don't know what this will be in the end we're sitting on them getting their shit together and sending it in to see if there will be articles written up but trump says it's a great day for republicans you know and they're sticking together. I would say they always have that. That's a no matter what they fucking will stick together for for the most part. And people who think that eventually there'll be Republicans who change sides and say enough. Hey, that could happen. I could see it. There's humanity in people. But if you're not getting the solid evidence you're not really coming through with the home run with the evidence and you're looking at mostly hearsay i mean how much are you gonna win i think the republicans are still doing the worst case here and i don't know politics suck really but it's good to have at least a grounding in what's going on. Nevertheless, foreign policy, these other things going on, I wish they were paying attention to. So wrapping this up from the beginning, we're sitting at the hearing, the inquiries being over. They're going to submit their report, see if articles will be drafted up. I think when you break the weeks down, the Democrats did a better job, but haven't nailed it for me. Although, like I said, they will corroborate the evidence in a better way. Republicans are not selling me on this deny, 
there was no this or no that. Spinning the narrative, and now we're looking at tying in people who are in the hearings to Trump's fucking stupidity. So I don't know where that'll go. We'll see what happens over the holidays. Hope to see everybody again. You know what to do. Take care, everybody. Till next time.